Hey everybody, uh, this is video 22, I believe. So in this video, what I'm going to try to do is explain the A star pathfinding algorithm um, to the best of my abilities. Now I created this little set of slides or whatever uh, pretty late last night. So don't mind the math. Um, the general concept should be here and what I'm going to tell you is true just the actual math I can't vouch for it um, but it took me a lot of time to to get this set up so I am really not going to redo it um, but we should get the idea so what I've got here is the general setup um, of everything that I should be able, that I need to probably teach uh, the a star uh, algorithm so first thing that the uh, algorithm is made up as of nodes all right we have node lists which is an open list and a closed list and then we have our starting node our goal node and then we have um, our open nodes and closed nodes which those will fit inside of those arrays of open and closed nodes all right so what I'm what I want to explain first <clears throat> is kind of what what makes up the a star method um, so here is a general node in the information that we need for a node now this is a visual representation of it um, so um, everything else there's a really there doesn't have to be any visual representation obviously so what we have is a a, a few different values that make up the the node and these help us calculate where we should try next and what our what our uh, our best options are to try to get to the goal so the first thing we have is this number here this 20 this is what's called the heuristic this is the distance from the goal uh, and that would be some people will actually do the distance so the 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 actual distance formula to get from here to here um, some people use a different method I can't remember the exact name but I'll explain it because we'll use that in this demonstration but just know when we create the a star pathfinding algorithm in code we're actually going to grab the distance because it just makes things a bit more accurate so that's what the heuristic is the distance um, from the goal the other one is our G cost and that's how much it costs to get to that node from the starting node so as we're going through our closed list we will we will be adding G costs because basically um, you'll see as we go how we calculate those and then we add these two values together how far how long it how far it took us to get to this node and how far is that node from the goal and those make what's called the F cost and then the F cost is uh, a big influence on whether we check that node next or not um, and then the little directional arrow thing that's our parent so this is represented in a directional arrow for our purposes lets us know which node we came from to get to this node so if I go to the next slide this right here is our heuristic so this is the general idea of how to, to get a heuristic now I'm going to use distance algorithm in our a star but um, this is one way so what you do is you take the distance on the X from that node to the starting node so this is eight one two three four five six seven eight nodes to the right and three nodes down um, one two and then three um, and that's how we get the heuristic we add these two together that makes eleven so if we continue this idea through all of them we get this so this is 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 and then 4 because we go backward to get to it and you can see these are all the heuristics for every node on the uh, map um, I didn't bother to calculate the heuristic for this um, I don't think it's a big deal alright so the next thing that we do is we push the starting node into our open list uh, or you know it's in our open list so that when we run a the function that's going to continually run it's a loop um, it takes a it needs to have a node in the open list to start checking so our first one is our starting goal 
our starting node, which is in position 1, 1, 1. So now what we can do is we can run this loop function, and what its job is is to um, to calculate where's the next node that we should check to get here. So what's the closest one, the be next best option. Um, and again, because we're using this method of going to the right and down and adding them, it doesn't seem to work as well as just using distance, but when explaining it this way, it makes the numbers a lot easier um, and simpler to to just use that idea so so the next thing we'll see is we pop this off of the the first thing we do is take it off of the open list and put it in the closed list all right and then from there now it's in the closed list and we've we add every neighbor to the open list and now that they're in the open list that these right here um, they will be candidates these will be things that we'll check next time we loop through to see which is our best option. So after after we do this, we're going to assign their parent to this start node because this is the the base node that we started with. Every node after this that we that we've added into the open list is automatically parented to it. So the next thing after this is calculating the uh, G cost. So how this normally works is uh, from one node to another, it's just one, a distance of one one node um, and then at an angle it's the uh, square root of 2 I believe and that's about 1.4 so um, this is kind of the idea of how to calculate F cost now generally it's a general rule to kind of multiply it by 10 so you, you get a nice integer so that's what we do so it takes one one unit to get to this which is just 10 10 10 10 and then all of these are going to be 14 as the G cost now our G cost to start out is zero, so I didn't even bother putting the information on this uh, on our start node. So what we do is we add these two together. So how much how do how much is it going to take, or how much? Uh, yeah, like how how much does it take to get to this node? How far away is the node from the goal? And then we add those together to get our F cost. So if we keep going, we do that for all of them. Basically, what we get is an idea of what node we should check next. So, uh, all of these are just basically 14 plus 11, 10 plus 10, so on and so forth. And we we then, since we have these in the open list, we can just rerun the function. And what that will do is we will have uh, the cheapest f cost. And in this case, it is these two here. Um, you may want to pick the one with the lowest heuristic. Uh, to check first but in this case they're both the same so we just check the first one that was popped into the array which would be this one here so now that gets put on the closed list its parent is still here and now we've opened up these ones over here as new um, new opened nodes and we've calculated their their uh, F cost the same way so how you do that now is you've got a F cost of 10 to get to here or sorry a heuristic of 10 no I was right a G cost sorry it a G cost of 10 here plus a G cost of 14 to go from here to there which gives us a a total G cost of 24 okay and then to get to our F cost we've added the 8 to it now the same thing can be said with this node here 10 it took us 10 to get there and then another 10 to get to the next one so that means that it is it has a G cost of 20 20 plus 7 is 27 and that's kinda the concept there so to get down here from 10 to this one we add 14 and we've got 24 plus 6 is 30 so these are kinda the, the idea um, and now what we did is uh, the next cheapest one oh sorry this is what uh, this is another rule that we have in the a star is if you have ones that are your parents uh, or sorry are already in the open list these these ones right here these two and these two over here are on the open list already so what we do is we do a check to see if the distance 
or the yeah the F cost if we were to come from this node to this node is cheaper than the one from coming from the, the the original whichever the original parent was so let's say if it was cheaper for us to go to this node and then down to this node if it was cheaper the F cost was cheaper than just going from here to here we would reparent it to this current node so that is good for like if you have if you have like a uh, if you have a situation where you need to go around something with a big opening what would happen is you would usually go down and then back up around the opening so you know like let picture like a, a U and you're on the right side of the U and you want to go to the bottom left side of the U if it goes up it would actually end up zig zagging down and making a V inside of that U and then coming around but when you repair it what it essentially is doing is it's just going to recheck to see if it was cheaper to just go straight across the top of the U and down. And, it, you, and in those cases, it's always going to be cheaper. Now, in this situation, since there are no obstacles, it's not, I don't think very many, if any, of these are going to actually have to be reparented. So we're probably not going to have any reparenting in this. So essentially, we just get in this situation 10 plus 10 is 20, 20 plus 7 is 27. So to get from this node to this node costs is an F cost of 27, um, where it's currently only at 21, so we won't reparent. I hope that makes sense. That's probably the most confusing part of it for me was figuring out um, how to reparent. But it's, it's really simple once you get the concept. So the next thing we're going to do is just continue on with the concept of getting the lowest F cost from the open list. So this was the other 18 since we exhausted everything else that was, uh, sorry, since that is the next lowest one, we check that again, adding more to our open list and pushing this into the closed list. Then 20 was our next lowest one um, and nothing was cheaper to reparent, so we don't reparent. And then we do our other 20. And then 21 was the next cheapest. And we're just pushing through doing these one at a time exploring the cheapest options first creating adding new ones to the open list and closing ones I didn't I decided to just remove that it just it doesn't need to be in there once we get the concept of the open and closed list we don't need to see it we just know that blue and blue means they're in the open list red means they're in the closed list so as we push through we can kind of see this general feel of you know everything's coming this way all these ones are coming back to our uh, back to our starting node and we're pushing on and it's crawling it's if you notice it's crawling to the right a little bit more than it's crawling to the to the um, bottom and then we just keep working and then once one of the checks that we do every loop is our is it the goal node so this node is going to have something to say that it's the goal node and if we do end up reaching the goal node we will then uh, essentially, bam, this node right here got ran and it checked its par its uh, neighbors and one of the neighbors was the goal node. And then we parented that goal node to this one and we're going to make it part of the path. So now once we have all of this and we've added each one to the open and close lists and and we've got, we finally reached the, the goal node, uh, what we do is we trace back through the parents so it's just a real quick loop I basically while the current node uh, dot parent exists then we're going to rerun the function passing in the parent as the current node which will then trace us all the way back all the way back to our uh, starting node and that will be a an array of nodes to travel on so that is essentially the idea of uh, a star you just have your open and close list pushing nodes popping nodes off the top of the open list putting them in the close list moving through using the F cost to decide whether you know we check that node next um, or whether we reparent and uh, when it's done we have an array of nodes and the cool thing is if you remember back to the last video where I used the right click to create a a uh, a path node like a path waypoint consider each 
one of these as a waypoint and we push that we just set that array uh, we reverse this array and set it as the path for our character and he'll automatically go from one node to the next pushing on until he gets where he's supposed to be at the the final node and he will have followed the path so it'll be really once we get the a star uh, class down it's super easy and it gets and it works right away um, I didn't throw any obstacles into this tutorial uh, I was going to but um, it's not really that big of a deal. Essentially, you just check to see if um, if one of the nodes is an obstacle. And if it is, then you just don't check it. You skip on to the next node. It's really simple. Um, I'm not going to actually start this programming of it in this video. I'm going to push on into the very next video where we're actually going to implement this class and program it. Now, guys, I'm not a professional. I, I don't claim to be a pro. I couldn't. You know, uh, I, I did all my research myself to figure this out. I didn't want to just copy somebody else's A star, um, like JavaScript, you know, so I built mine from scratch. It may not be the most optimized, but it does do the A star pathfinding algorithm, and you can watch it happen. It looks really fun, it's really awesome. Um, so, in the next video, we'll start programming it, and I, I think we're going to have a great time, and I'll try to make it kind of quick, hopefully. So I will see you guys in the next video where we take what we learned here and hopefully uh, hopefully get a character to start walking where we tell him to and maybe even have four or five or ten characters walk, follow a, uh, a path. And uh, I will see you guys in that next video. I hope you enjoy it.